The top story is Eritrean refugees said to be abused and killed by TPLF fighters. And TPLF still fantasizes about controlling Addis Ababa and forming a free Tigray state. Hello, many thanks for joining us. You're watching Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Tabitha John. Do stay with us. ENDF's call for the people of Tigray to say no to TPLF's belligerence aims to save Tigray's generation of youth from being decimated, says Office of the Prime Minister. In her weekly pre briefing she gave to the media, Press Secretary of Office of the Prime Minister, Bileni Seyum, has accused the TPLF of forcefully nudging the youth to war. The Press Secretary also highlighted that TPLF is deliberately blocking aid in the areas it has conquered in the state of Amharic. Solomon Danya has this report. The Tigray region cannot sustain loss of an entire generation of youth. In its recent call to the TPLF fighters and the people of Tigray, the Ethiopian National Defense Force pledged amnesty for those who surrender defying TPLF's belligerence for a senseless war. Reacting on the call while briefing journalists Thursday, Press Secretary of Office of the Prime Minister Bilene Siyum said the people of Tigray should say enough is enough to save their generation of youth from being decimated for nothing. The dynamics are always continually shifting. Um, when this is being made, when this call is being made by the NDF, when this call is being made by the federal government, this is again an expression of humanity, an expression of compassion, um, understanding the, the challenges and the suffering that the people of Tigray are also being subjected to by, by TPLF's uh, um, arrogance and uh, egregious uh, uh, acts and also continued belligerence. This message is uh, received within the, um, the spirit of solidarity that is received within the spirit of understanding that the Tigray region cannot sustain loss of an entire generation of youth um, as is being uh, uh, perpetrated by the TPLF as well. Regarding humanitarian efforts, the press secretary highlighted that the TPLF is deliberately blocking aid in the areas it operates in the state of Amhara making the effort difficult. Assistance to some Waradas in the northern part of Wallo that are besieged by the terrorist group TPLF have been hindered. Uh, as you know, North Wallo is one of the areas under the safety net uh, program and prone to food insecurity. As such, TPLF's hindrance for humanitarian actors to reach uh, civilians in need is worsening the situation. Not only has the terrorist group uh, destroyed the livelihood of people in the region, but it is also holding uh, hostage the people of North Wallo and systematically blocking assistance from reaching uh, these people who are in need. Commenting on the joint independent investigation of the UN and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission on the alleged atrocities and human rights violations, Bilene said her government hopes that the investigation will include atrocities being committed by the TPLF after the ceasefire. All of these egregious uh, rights violations, uh, particularly in Amhara region and Afar region, and also what is um, happening under the watch of TPLF within the Tigray region, need to also be part of this investigation. So the Ethiopian government holds that. And this has also uh, been shared. So we do hope that there will be an opportunity to address uh, uh, this aspect of it. Nevertheless, um, the Ethiopian government still um, uh, is grateful for the measures uh, that have been taken uh, in terms of uh, ensuring this independent investigation is, uh, had been undertaken on the ground. The press secretary has also expressed Ethiopia's volition to sit down with Egypt and Sudan to talk over the issues of the GERD under the facilitation of the African Union. Eritrean refugees are said to be targeted in Tigray amid the ongoing conflict in the region. The TPLF fighters are blamed for the killings and human rights abuses in the refugee camps where the Eritreans live. Human Rights Watch has thus called for urgent protection and assistance after divulging reports on the whereabouts of Eritrean refugees. Alula Teklamariam has more. 
Ethiopia has a long history of providing shelters to refugees from neighboring nations. This includes those coming from Eritrea, hosting approximately 149,000 registered Eritrean refugees. Many were in the northern Tigray region, bordering Eritrea in four campuses, with approximately 20,000 in Hesas and Shimeleba, in northwestern Tigray, and about 31,000 in Mayaini and Adi Harish campus. However, those refugee camps turned to be hellish grounds to these refugees who used to be peacefully living for over 20 years. Unfortunately, they have become target of the war broke out in Tigray in November 2020. In connection with this, the Human Rights Watch unveiled reports that TPLF fighters kill, rape and abuse Eritrean refugees in different times. According to the report, on November 23, Tigrayan militia entered Hezaz's camp and attacked refugees. Clashes between the militia fighters and Eritrean soldiers in shooting in around the camp, lasting several hours. Nine refugees were killed and 17 badly injured. One refugee said the Tigrayan militia fighters killed her husband as their family tried to seek shelter inside the church. Two dozen residents in Hezaz's town were also reportedly killed during and after the clashes that day. The Tigrayan militia retreated from Hezaz after the fighting. It is to be recalled that the UNHCR and the UN Refugee Agency have been expressing concerns about the fate of thousands of Eritrean refugees currently trapped into two refugee camps in Ethiopia's Tigray region as fighting between armed groups escalated in and around the camps. An estimated 24,000 Eritrean refugees in Mayaini and Adi Harush camps in Tigray's Maitsebri area are facing intimidation and harassment and living in constant anguish, cut off from humanitarian assistance, urgent protection and assistance is thus recommended to reach out those refugees. Wana der sane ni shagar wale fi tuniya yene lemi hum zamanish lemi hum kanish to bena tagare wana der sashi atis no elatu sinaga lelitu salam no fikir yaw da mat nagar wan demi ehe ta tauchi ba mote chinkatu tetana Ethiopians are aggressively joining and signing the White Envelope to White House movement, which stays for 15 days. The petition is meant to clarify to the U.S. and the rest of the world the facts on the ground in Ethiopia. Deputy Coordinator of the National Movement, Akhli Lutadisa, told ETV today that the movement is instrumental in discharging responsibilities of citizenship. Daniel Kasahun reports. The National Youth Movement among a few fellows appear from informal talks to serious intervention. White envelope flared to the White House movement. Beginning Wednesday, now it has become a national platform and all Ethiopians are joining it, including well-known figures from the athletes, the artists and from the contesting parties and from government officials, among others. Inside the envelope is a letter to President Joseph Biden, clearly discussing real situations of Ethiopia in brief. Deputy Director of the National Movement, Takli Lutadessa, told ETV, the movement is instrumental to discharging responsibilities of citizenship. There is, there is maybe some issues that we, we cooperate, we integrate, but such kinds of uh, uh, intervening on the internal issues is unacceptable in Ethiopian citizens, in Ethiopian context. We, we, we respect America, we respect our relation, but uh, we don't need to compromise on our internal issue, on our sovereignty, on our uh, uh, territorial integrity. This should be known in all of the, the international community, including of the United Nations of America. White envelope flirt to White House movement will have indispensable significance in countering biased reports of several international media and organizations regarding the current situation in Ethiopia. The main objective of this mobilization is uh, to disclose the factors uh, undertaken in Ethiopia, uh, especially the, the, the Western countries and some of the medias including of the, the, the government officials and statements 
uh, didn't clearly understand what's going in Ethiopia. Akhilo attested Ethiopians should stand in unison to expose to the world machinations of the terrorist PLF to dismantle Ethiopia and disrupt peace and security of the region at large. Especially the, the terrorist uh, TPLF uh, was uh, doing all, all evils in Ethiopia uh, by those the last 30 years. And now uh, the terrorist group is uh, marginalized from the Ethiopian political platform, uh, but doing all, all, all the evils which, is, which we can uh, said that the, the, the extension of what uh, it was doing in last 30 years. Uh, but Ethiopians have many factors regarding. So the Americans uh, should skip our internal issue to us. The letter urges the United States government to stand with the truce, considering long-standing relationships of the two countries, which transcend us short-term government policies that varies from one leader to the other. The most notorious public face of the terrorist TPLF, Getacho Radda, revealed the group's nightmarish plan of controlling Addis Ababa and forming a free Tigray state. During a lengthy interview with the LCC-sponsored TEN TV channel, Getacho went on and on about the TPLF's victory in several areas, while the group is in fact suffering heavy casualties and has fled the entire state of afar. Let's see the details as follows. Sayyid Getacho, welcome back. Yes, thank you, thank you. During what looks very much like a stage-managed interview with carefully designed and TPLF-blessed questions forwarded to Getacho, an out-and-out -out lie was presented about the reality in the war front. While the TPLF has heavily lost battles in the Wilkite, the Brezevit, Nefas Mocha, Mirsa and various other parts of the Amhara state and fled after heavy defeats in Afar, Getacho told D10 his trumped-up story of TPLF victorious in several places leveling all sorts of accusations against the Ethiopian government, none of which he or any other Western body has so far corroborated. He went on the threat of other wave of attack against both Amhara and Afar sets. It's to be recalled that some Egyptian pandits recently dressed down the TPLF for fleeing out of Afar. Gitacho tried to upstage the laws in Afar by renting about series of assaults to take place in both Afar and Amhara with the view to weaken the Abiy regime. We uh, have been fighting uh, this war against uh, Abiy Ahmed. In fact, Gita Choreda is so used to accusing Abiy with all sorts of lies, including selling the gird to Egypt. أبي هم إنه ما نكما نكما ما نم يلم ك ك تكلم الستر أبي بلاي يجوز هنا نجوا كيل زي هاجر استيلم بنا قرأت له ودسوم ملص عليه لذي شو مبرشيب بال هداس يقدر من مشت قدائي لا يعينون على شيء بودن كل سب 
ይቺ ጉዳይ አደባባይ ላይ እንዳትወጣ ድራማ በየቀኑ እንደሚሰራ ካስቀደውንም ስንናገር ነበር ይቀጥላል ይሄ ድራማ ይቀጥላል following the footsteps of the stranger leader of the TPLF Debra Zion Gabriel Mikhail Getacho talked of TPLF's possible foray into a disabba he said the foray is needed to annihilate the enemy once and for all Getacho also touched on the latest unholy alliance between his group and that of the OLF Shane adding that TPLF is willing to strike a coalition with any group interested in toppling Addisabba سيد هيتاشو يعني حدثني ايضا عن علاقتكم كجبهه تحرير التجري مع قوات عفار والصومال وبني شنقول حيث حدثت يعني كثير من المناوشات خلال الفتره الماضيه يعني حدثني عن علاقتكم بهذه الاقاليم عناصر الجبهه والاحرار Uh, but we are ready to work with anyone. Getach also referred to TPLF's dream of a free Tigray state, not saying a word about how this could come about given the constitutional challenge and the possibility of military victory, which is far-fetched. A 10-day capacity building training is being given for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs staff. The training is expected to play a significant role in further uplifting the reform agenda launched by the ministry. All of the staffers of the ministry are participating in the training that has been underway at the Africa Leadership Excellence Academy. In addition, spokesperson of Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Dina Mufti, has briefed Addis Ababa-based local and international media on major activities the country has conducted during the last week regarding political and public diplomacy sectors. He said the FIP and Human Rights Commission delegation met with the Office of UN High Commissioner for Human Rights on the activities carried out in investigating alleged human rights issues in the northern part of Ethiopia. The joint investigation process has been finalized and the final report will be released in November, he added. Dina Mufti has also outlined the benefits of the training as follows. With regard to the capacity building, as you know, Ethiopian diplomats based abroad and uh, uh, those working in the head office are undertaking a capacity building performance here. Uh, there were presentations by uh, on, on various issues, especially on the issues regarding the reform, the reform at the national level, the reform at the, 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 the current situation, international situation, uh, the challenges and the tasks that the diplomats will face ahead, uh, and they have been briefed on, 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 on various um, uh, subjects. Um, this will, will continue for 10 days. The objective of this exercise is actually to strengthen the capacity of dip our diplomats and to strengthen their, strengthen their ability to deliver uh, by way of uh, uh, promoting national interest whenever they are assigned. And there will be also restructuring the our institutions, both embassies and the head office in view of uh, uh, creating efficiency uh, and uh, diligence. So this capacity building will continue. Actually, this is the first phase. The second phase will continue with others. Uh, other diplomats who have not participated now will come uh, hopefully after this one is completed. Food and Agriculture Organization FAO says it will work to rehabilitate farmers in the Amhara state who have been displaced and attacked by TPLF terrorist group. A representative of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in Ethiopia, Fatuma Sayed, has discussed with Chief of the Amhara State, Aganyo Tashagar, on the possibility of providing humanitarian assistance to those affected people by the terrorist group. Aganyo has highlighted the most affected people of the region by the terrorist group to the delegates of FAO and called on the organization to provide immediate humanitarian assistance in these areas. Listen to him. North Zolo, Wag, North Gondar, in some part of uh, uh, South Zolo, uh, some part of South Gondar, were uh, just under the aggression, you know. Most of the farmers are under the safety net program, you know. They are food insecure, you know. Uh, you know, just 
uh, you know families already occurred in that area more than 551,000 people are already displaced you know IDPs you know this most of the people are living with their families uh, and uh, in IDP centers around the bark around the same something Fatuma Said, the representative of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, in Ethiopia, on her part, expressed readiness of her organization to rehabilitate farmers who have been disrupted by the terrorist group in the state. Yes, we are concerned that now this is the time that the farmers should be engaging in, in their farms. And, you know, unfortunately, it's true that this is uh, disturbance is happening at this moment where it will, it is affecting and will affect the uh, food insecurity. So we will see with our colleagues and we will talk to our partners and donors how we can support during the bank for those families to plant. Ethiopian artifacts, including a Bible, crosses, and an imperial shield looted at the Battle of Magdala in 1868, are to be returned to Ethiopia, thanks to the Scheherazade Foundation, which purchased the items through a UK-based auction house and private dealers. The embassy will make arrangements for the items to be returned to Ethiopia. Meet EBC has caught up with the CEO of the Scheherazade Foundation, Dahir Shah, who stressed on the importance of the artifacts to Ethiopians. Listen to this. That's right. And, you know, it pleased me very greatly that it was just around the time of the Ethiopian New Year, which gave us an added cause for celebration. And for us, the Sherazad Foundation, the repatriation of these objects is all about that. It is about celebration. And um, we're hoping that it will inspire other people to repatriate create objects within their own collections. Tahir Shah said he knew what the return of the objects would mean to Ethiopians and that through his foundation, he hopes to build strong bridges between Ethiopia and his foundation. I read in the newspapers after our repatriation ceremony in London, I read in the newspapers that this was the largest repatriation of Magdala objects, treasures, ever. And it filled me with it filled, filled me with warmth and pride because of the Sherazad Foundation, which I run, we've worked very hard, obviously, to acquire these objects and um, and to draw attention to Magdala and um, the injustices. But at the same time, it filled me with shock and horror because we repatriated about 20 or so objects. And this is the tip of the iceberg. At Magdala, the British took many thousands, maybe tens of thousands of objects, some of them the most priceless and sacred objects within the Ethiopian um, culture. And it horrifies us that a repatriation of 20 objects or so is suddenly um, deemed as the most significant repatriation in 153 years. There's something wrong about that. And what we want to do is to inspire other people to return objects as well. The Embassy of Japan in Ethiopia has signed 174,000 US dollars worth grant contracts today to make expansion works at a secondary school in the southern region and Sidama region. Japanese Ambassador to Ethiopia Ito Takako on the occasion underscored the need to invest on children and education for future development of the country. According to the Ambassador, the projects invested in education of children in the country have the potential to further deepen friendship between the peoples of Japan and Ethiopia. The projects are also aligned with the quality education target set in the Sustainable Development Goals, she pointed out. Children are the foundation for the future development of a country. Providing basic education for children is not only for the development of children themselves, but also an important investment for the country's future. In addition, I'm very confident that these projects will align with the goals set by the Sustainable Development Goals, particularly Goal 4. 
quality education. A few weeks ago, I visited a secondary school in Sidama region and learned that a lot of children were studying in a condition that lacks enough classrooms or uh, lacks good school furniture such as desks and chairs. I express that new school buildings will help children to feel happy to come to school and enjoy learning. The actual implementations of these projects begin today. I expect that these two NGOs, the TESFA Foundation and the Resurrection and Life Development Organization will maintain smooth communication with the embassy during the implementation process and that they complete this project as swiftly as possible for the benefit of the children. Lastly, I strongly hope that this project signed today will further deepen the friendship between the people of Japan and the people of Ethiopia. And then the Giziats in Daulon of Hasanacho, Mogadacho Baratal. And then the Giziats, Wajaban Lacho, Maabelacho Gasfal. And then the Giziats, Esatanacho, Wellafanacho Yakilad. And then the Giziats, Yet Ornet Nacho, Yet Offer Filnos. And then the Giziat, Yehulu Alfo, yes at Taiwan Alu, Salam Bemidri to Alain Exile. Gizelo wet al, Nyagen, Santan in Comalen, Hagar Malet, Inyanen. Welcome back. Ambassador and permanent representative of Ethiopia to the United Nations UN, Tayyat Kasilasi, said that the UNSC referral of the GERD to the trilateral negotiation and the AU-led process is appropriate. Ambassador Taye noted the decision shows the position of the Council on the consideration of the issue as a water right and water development issue. Quote unquote, at a press stakeout, we have underlined that the most important issue the two sisterly riparian countries shall be ready to deal with is a rule based order on the Nile Basin, whereby each of the 11 riparian countries will utilize their share from the resource. Ambassador Taye underlined. Like the Ethiopian Kebara drum, I came in playing the Ghanaian dundo to represent the unity in Africa. We can never talk about unity without talking about Ethiopia. Welcome to Addis Ababa, the home of the African Union and the capital town of Ethiopia. Two great men, a sergeant for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and the Emperor Haile Selassie the First were very instrumental in the formation of the Organization of African Unity, now known as the African Union. These two understood that together we stand, divided we fall. May the souls of these great Pan-Africanists go marching on. Tonight, I am going to be taking you through a cultural, historic, and insightful tour through Ethiopia. When you come to Ethiopia, there are sites that you might want to visit some of which include the Simeon National Park with its high peaks, deep valleys, and sharp precipices stretching over 1,500 meters. You might also want to visit the ruins of Aksum, which represents the heart of ancient Ethiopia, when the kingdom of Aksum was the most powerful between the Eastern Roman Empire and Persia. You might also want to visit Tia, which is an archaeological site in the center of Ethiopia, south to Addis Ababa. Ethiopia prides itself in its diverse landscape and rich culture, which is why you might want to visit so many cities in Ethiopia, some of which include Addis Ababa, Mabel, Landivela, Gondar, just to mention a few. Ethiopia, being the second most populated country in Africa, is the only country that has never been colonized by the West. The Italians tried to create a colonial crack on Africa through Ethiopia, but were defeated at the Battle of Adura. They hid on the hills looking down at the valleys of Adura with their guns, bows, and arrows and defeated the Italians. Did you know 
that Ethiopia is the only country with a 13 calendar system? What does this even mean? This means that when everybody else in the world has 12 months in a year, there are 13 months in Ethiopia. This is why I'm seven years younger. Because while all of you are in the year 2021, it is still 2014 in Ethiopia. Interesting, isn't it? In fact, yesterday, September 11th, was a new year in Ethiopia. Now come and meet Ahmed. And finally, West African bloc ECOWAS said it would meet again to discuss possible steps after Guinea's president was ousted in a coup earlier this month, Ghana's foreign minister said. ECOWAS already suspended Guinea last week after a special forces commander toppled the 83-year-old president Alpha Conde, calling his ouster a clear violation of the group's regional charter. A delegation from the 15-member ECOWAS group was sent to Conakry to meet with coup leader Lieutenant Colonel Mamadi Dumboya to visit Conde and demand a civilian-led transition, as reported by African News. You're watching Addis News Hour, a quick reminder of the day's headlines. Eritrean refugees had to be abused and killed by TPLF fighters. And TPLF still fantasizes about controlling Addis Ababa and forming a free Tigray state. And that's all we had for now. I'm Tabitha Domini. Thanks for watching. Have a good night and take care.